Dennis Barham with Julian, a rapper. Say what's up, Julian. What's going on, everybody? Yeah, so tell me about the humble beginnings of Julian to become a rapper. And he is a rapper, very good one, by the way, to get into yeah. it. Um, honestly, I've been rapping a long time. I started writing my own music when I was 15 years old, so it's like 15 years later. And I just love hip-hop, and it's therapeutic, so I've always loved doing it. Were you always a good rhymer? Did you have some hiccups at the beginning where it didn't rhyme, you had to struggle through it to get to this point? Well, of course. I mean, like anything you do in life, it takes practice. And just over time, I kept writing, and I kept freestyling, and I just got better over time, and now I just feel I've perfected it. Now, did you get support from the beginning, uh, obviously being white? You know, did you get a lot of support, a lot of hate, a lot of um, um, uncertainty within yourself, maybe, of becoming a rapper? Um, I, I think in the beginning, I didn't believe it as much. And, like, people, too, when I would show people my music in my early stages, when I was 17, I would show friends. They are just kind of like, yeah, and shake it off. But as time went by, I would have more people hating on me, more people liking my stuff. And I just, I never planned to change this vision. I've always had the same amount of passion for it, and it just continues to grow and get bigger. Now, uh, the song I truly like is Lifestyle, and you got uh, Kid Ocean producing a lot of your tracks. Tell me about Kid Ocean, Lifestyle, and some of the other tracks that you've uh, produced and uh, worked on. Sure. So, um, Kid Ocean, um, a lot of instrumentals now I know rappers and stuff like myself YouTube is a great place to find producers and Kid Ocean was very popular on YouTube he's one of those producers I came across and I really liked his instrumentals so I started working on a lot of his stuff and then I decided to do my whole EP just around his production and I dropped the revenge in September in uh, 2018 and a lot of people seem to like it so I'm happy now we have a city full of rappers and producers what differentiate uh, yourself from the other rappers what makes you characteristic your characteristics so differently from the other rappers um, I would say for one, like a lot of the rappers in our city are fronting, so that's kind of like just not cool with me. And then the other thing, I, I don't think people are as hungry as I am. I really came from the bottom and I'm here now and like I want to go to the top and I continue to work and keep taking the steps it takes to get there. So I'm ready. So somebody has told me, and I'm sure you're aware of it, that 50 Cent has somehow gotten connected with you. And how did that happen? How did it make you feel? And how's that doing for your career? Um, I think it's been doing great things for my career. You know, I've had New York and LA watching me lately, but. I just had this feeling that 50 Cent was watching me. I had a lot of 50 Cent fan pages following me. And I've always liked 50 Cent's charisma, and he's an entrepreneur just like myself. And then on Instagram, I made a comment on one of his posts, and he actually responded to me. And that, once that happened, I kind of knew, like, I had a feeling that 50 Cent knows of who I am. So I'm just kind of excited to move forward. And I'm trying to get signed to G-Unit, so I'm excited for the future to see what it holds. And where do you get your lyrical content from? Just life. I, I write about different things. Sometimes it's braggadocious. I mean, rap always has that, but I also have conscious stuff. I have sad songs. I have music about anything. I've written over thousands of songs, so anything you can name, I've done a song about it. And when are you the most creative when you're rapping, when you're writing your songs? Um, is it like, you know, you're, you're taking the train or you're sitting down by yourself? Um, yeah, I would say I, I'm most creative when I'm alone. I'm just in my zone. I'm near my computer, listening to beats, and I just start writing. Now, when you say there's a lot of rappers and producers, and some of them are fronting, um, if, if one of them wants to come on your album, how do you say no? You can't come on my album. I can't be associated with you. And how do you network yourself appropriately to your energy? Well, there's two ways you can handle that. You could just be uh, a mean person and say no straight up, like work on your craft. Or I would tell them I'll help develop you and get them to a level I think they need to be at. Or you just give them a really high price for a feature. So when they tell you tell them ten thousand, they usually just walk away from there. So it kind of works. So usually when the rappers in Toronto that I'm aware of, um, when they're starting their rapping, they love the passion of rapping, but they forget about the business aspect of it. How were how were you introduced in the business aspect of rapping? Um. Well, when I was younger, like I, everyone's got a job, everyone has to eat, and everyone needs money, and I, I had the vision to print CDs, and when I started selling them, and I started doing so good, and meeting so many people, I realized I was able to quit my job, and like the whole backpack thing, I know old heads used to do that in the 90s, so I got OGs respecting me for that, I can show the youth how to make money, selling CDs and selling your art is where it's at, I've been able to quit my job now and do that, and I just keep doing it. Now, your production is only from Kid Ocean, or are you able to produce your own songs, or how involved are you with your songs in the music content? So, Kid Ocean was just for that project that came out in September. Um, I just, I've never made my own production, I've never produced my own beats, but I have been digging through the crates for 15 years, so I feel like my beat selection is really good. And I'm always just looking for new producers. Any producers out there that are trying to work with me, send on some beats, and I'll let you know what I think. How do you get in contact with you? Um, it's really easy. My email is jwhitehiphop at gmail. Just the letter J, the color white, hip hop at gmail. Send me some beats and I'll, I'll give you some critiquing and I'll let you know if I want to work with them. 
Do you ever forget? This is my personal question right now for all the rappers. Do you ever forget a rhyme? Do you ever forget like you know a word or skip a word with all the rhymes that you got? Of course, I've, every rapper's I done that. Yeah. <laughs> no man, when you when you've written thousands of songs, I realize now because I've written so much music, like. Sometimes I'll have rhymes that are similar to other ones, so I'll like mix up a different song and like the pattern's similar. Like it, it happens a lot, but the more you focus, memorizing music is just about practice too. You just have to constantly practice it so it's instilled in your head. And what's the next step for you, uh, Julian? Next step is I'm just working on putting out an album at the end of the month. I want to get a couple videos done, so I'm excited about that. And spreading the clothing line out. We got to get Six Dot out there. It's not the Six no more. It's not T Dot. It's Six Dot. So you know what it is. And how did it come to, to light? I mean, the Six Dot, you're being a rapper. Um, how did this come to fruition? Well, I, I never really thought about having a clothing line. And I was writing, I was actually writing rhymes one day, and just the name Six Dot popped in my head. And when I thought of it, I'm like, that's my clothing line. It just made sense. And I, I saw how Toronto, they were selling the six everywhere. Everyone's selling the six, 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 this. And I was like, you know what? Six style will work. It kind of ties in the new and the old. And I think people can relate to it. And I just knew I should run with it. Last question. Any advice to rappers up and coming in Toronto that you'd like to give? Um, yeah, just if, if you really want to do this, just never give up and believe in your dreams. And you can do anything you believe. Simple. What inspired you to be a rapper? Um, originally how I started writing was I, I grew up in Toronto, but then my family moved out to Hamilton and I kind of had, I had no friends. It was around high school. So it was like, I was in a new atmosphere and I, I just started writing. That was how it all started. And then ever since then, I've never stopped writing. I didn't know you were from Hamilton. So you were the popular guy in Hamilton that was a rapper. Yeah. Well, I mean, Hamilton's kind of a smaller city, so it was easier to kind of spread. And I know I still have a lot of friends in Steel City, so shout out to them. But Toronto's my home. It is six dots. You said Steel City. I haven't heard that in a while. Steel City. So when you started rapping in Hamilton, is there a platform um, for rappers to develop their skills? Um, not as much as Toronto, like, because Toronto's more big, big but I, I do plan on bringing more platforms to Hamilton because it is another city I love, so we'll be doing that in the near future. How were you able to um, hone your skills in terms of your ability to rap, um, freestyle? Just, just the uh, practice and talking about all the bullshit I see in the streets out there. I mean, Barton's friggin' crazy. <laughs> and so how did you get from Hamilton to Toronto? Um, honestly, I just like I got caught up with too many wrong people out there and I just knew that I had to come back to Toronto I had to escape from the negativity and when I came back to Toronto The original reason I never started recording because studio time was always expensive I was a young teenager, but when I came back to Toronto someone told me oh, there's a community center and there's free studio time So that was when I first started recording at loft back in the day around rich kid junior T Adam bomb people like that And then yeah, I just been taking music serious ever since Who do you want to shout out? Who do you want to shout out? Um yeah, I just want to shout out the whole team and all my fans lately, whoever's been supporting the vision and gets the vision, and all the fans that like my music and show me support, I really appreciate it, and I can't wait to show you my new music. So, Julian, we do this to everybody. What is this? Well, hold on now, <laughs> right? I'm not singling you out or nothing like that, all right, right? We all do right. this to everybody. We want you to give us a freestyle. Are you able to do that? I'm a real MC. Okay, so. you know, they're not going to come by your album if they don't know who you are, right? Yeah. So here we go. All right. Usually I like holding the mic, but I'll let it go this time. Okay, <laughs> so I'm the first one to do that? That's how bad I want the mic. Uh, not what I do. You know what I'm go ahead. <laughs> Yo, what up? It's Six Dot. I'm illin'. Don't make me put six dots on your head like I'm Krillin, but like you're Krillin. But yo, I ain't a gangster, I'm chillin'. And you could make money off all the beans that I'm spillin'. Cause my intelligence is on this super echelon, next level shit. Kill the instrumental quick. I'm on some old school, mixed with the new school. Not a fool like most of y'all that brag about money, drugs, and jewels. I'm too cool, too cool for school. I skip class to write rhymes, I'm ill with the math. Got a sick craft, get back. Aye. That's Julia. Yo, I, I should get a, like a dumpling from you or something like that. <laughs> it's that simple. Peace out, man. Yeah. Want to sell him. me a mm. lifestyle. Like they'll sell you a lifestyle. They don't know about my lifestyle. On that fuck you pay me talking right now. Lifestyle. I've been grinding my whole life now. Lifestyle. Always up through the night now. Lifestyle. 5-0 try to throw the spike.